this is just a quick video that I'm making in response to an excellent comment that was made on one of my previous videos and it related to the repair of this uh, REN computer. It's not solely related to this but it was in response to a video that I'd made on repairing this REN. And the comment uh, suggested using uh, a finger to test temperatures of various um, components to see if they were getting hot. And that is uh, actually an excellent technique and it's one of the first techniques I ever used in repairing electronics. It's also one of the techniques that has caused me the most pain in repairing electronics. I'll start with a true story. Uh, I was nine years old. I was designing a switching power supply for a robot system I was making and I was using uh, reclaimed components as I always did then and um, the output device is, it's only low current uh, supply, the output device was a, a BFY-51 in a TO-39 package and if you're familiar with those they're the small round top hat type devices, uh, metal case. So uh, I couldn't get this thing to work and it, it, it would work intermittently and then it would stop and um, ultimately I was uh, using the finger technique so I put my finger onto the case of the BFY-51 to see if it was getting warm and uh, ended up having a, a blister on that finger for several weeks. So a big round blister on the tip of my finger told me two things. One is there was definitely something wrong with the circuit and the second thing was uh, be more careful when putting your finger on electronic components. In later years I was designing a, a microcontroller system that uh, drove a series of relays and one of the relays was buzzing and it turned out there was a firmware bug that was causing the relay to, or one of the relays to switch on and off rapidly and um, happened to put my finger on the driver for it and uh, got a, a shock of several thousand volts from the back EMF of the, um, uh, the relay. So I obviously hadn't learned my first lesson as well as I thought I had. So. Using a finger is a, an excellent technique. It is amazing how sensitive the human finger is to temperature. And once you get used to what you're expecting to feel when you put your finger onto a device, uh, you can normally tell if a device is running slightly hotter than it should be, even just a few degrees. Now, it can be a bit misleading. Some devices do run really hot, and even devices you've seen before, such as um, buffer chips, can run a lot hotter in certain installations but especially if it's a, a device you're familiar with and a, a board you're familiar with then it can be an excellent technique. Um, just be cautious, um, some devices can get extremely hot uh, even in normal operation. But these days I tend to use one of these. It is of course a thermal camera. Uh, they're still quite expensive but the prices are coming down and if you can afford one and you do a lot of fault finding they are well worth the expense. They can save you a lot of time in fault finding and as per the previous few videos I'm showing lots of different techniques here that I use but in general it's a combination of all these techniques to quickly pinpoint uh, where the faults lie. So although it may look in these videos that I'm spending a huge amount of time in fault finding, um, in reality I'm spending more time making the videos than I, than I am in actually finding the faults. Um, once you start looking around and you have the right technique sorted out and fault finding does tend to become uh, fairly quick and, and second nature. So by way of demonstration what I've done, if you've been watching the videos on this uh, REN repair you know that I've got it up to the point where the boot screen uh, will appear. So I'll turn the REN on. but as you can see it's not working. What I've done is I've put back one of the devices that I swapped out so I know there's a faulty device in here, I know which one it is of course um, but I thought we'd try and use the thermal camera method to locate it and try to pin down which particular component it is but as I say there are some caveats in using thermal cameras when fault finding on PCBs. So I'll get the thermal camera and I'll switch it on. Now the thing is this is an infrared uh, camera and so it's not particularly bothered about ambient light unless you're using incandescent lighting or light that has a lot of 
uh, infrared energy in it. So don't do this next to a window. Um, LED lights are fine, usually as long as they're not generating interference. So looking at the board with the thermal camera, you can see that already it's looking quite alarming. It does look like there are some hot spots on here. And that's to be expected. The thing to bear in mind when you're using a thermal camera, so if we look at this field of view, you've seen there are some what appear to be extremely hot components. You can put the cursor over and see how hot it is. And that particular one, it's not quite lined up properly on this camera. Um, that one's up to about 24 degrees or so, um, which is obviously not very hot, but it looks very hot. And the thing with the thermal camera is it's showing you, within its field of view, a temperature range from the hottest item in that field of view to the coldest. And that means it can be very misleading. If you take a, a device like the microprocessor, so although I can feel this, um, it's getting barely warm. Um, when you look at it through the thermal camera, it appears to be extremely hot. Um, but when you look at the, the actual temperature, it's only about 26, 27 degrees. Also, your finger can heat things up and cool things down. So if we take a board like this and look at it through the thermal camera, if you ignore my fingers, you can see the board appears the same temperature all over. But if I just momentarily hold on to the board, and then we look at it again through the thermal camera, you can see there's now a hot spot on the board that was caused by me touching it. So you do need to be careful when you're doing this. So the general technique is to make sure that you're understanding what it is you're looking at through the thermal camera. So what I'll do is I'll move the video camera so it's over the board and we can get a better look at uh, the view through the thermal camera. It's not particularly easy doing this because obviously um, I can't move the thermal camera around very well when trying to look at the screen on the video camera. But I'll, I'll do it as best as I can, but um, hopefully you'll see enough to uh, appreciate what uh, is going on. Now hold the camera here for a few seconds and you can see already where the issue is. I'll give you a few seconds to look at that and see if you can figure out what the problem is. Um, but now we'll uh, zoom in, I'll move the video camera and we'll look more closely at the board but notice the REN is still not uh, functional. Okay, so looking a bit more closely at the board. So as I said, we've got this issue with there are some very um, hot uh, devices on here in, in terms of the scale we're looking at on the thermal camera. The thermal camera has got a bit of a habit of uh, turning itself off just when you don't want it to. Um, so what we need to do is to increase the resolution that we are seeing on the display. And the easiest way to do that is to take something and just put it over the devices that are causing the hotspots. So if I take this board and put it over that device that's causing the hotspots, assuming we're happy that that's not the device that's causing the problem, and the same with this device, and then we'll do the same with that one. So all large-scale devices tend to cause problems. And then there's a couple of buffer chips that um, are getting hot, but I know they're not faulty, I've tested them. So I'll cover those. So, so don't use something like paper. Paper is almost transparent to infrared. Um, it won't um, mask out the, uh, the hot spots. So we'll cover that device up. And looking around now, you'll see that the other components seem to be getting hotter. They're not, it's just that what we're doing is we're increasing the um, the resolution over this temperature range of the camera and what we can see now if we look around is most devices are fairly cool we've got one here that's slightly warm as I put my finger in you'll see everything seems to dim down because my finger is then the hottest thing in the field of view turn my finger out and we get more um, thermal response from everything else so if I take the camera out of the way we can see if we look across these particular components then we would expect all these to be running at the same temperature, that they're all the same device and they're all doing the same job on this board. Uh, and yet, when we look at them through the thermal camera, we can see that one in particular is running a lot colder than the others. So that is one of the issues when using a thermal camera. Don't assume that everything that's faulty will be hot. Sometimes you'll get an issue where the faulty device is not running and therefore it's colder 
So it's looking like what we have here is that particular component is not doing the same as the other seven. And indeed that is the component I've swapped out that I know is faulty. So I'll take that uh, component out and swap it with a working one. Okay, I've rebooted the RIN and it is up and running. And if we watch these components, we had the one in the middle there that was um, colder than the others. Uh, the others of course still have some heat because uh, they've been running for a while. But we can see that the other component is now coming up to uh, the same temperature. And if we give it a few minutes, then they'll all even out. Had it been powered up um, with them all in from the same temperature, the enamel will be showing the same thing. But if you recall, it was almost completely cold before. And you can see now it's very quickly coming up to the same temperature. Uh, devices don't need very long to uh, warm up. And if you see hotspots occurring quite quickly, then um, there's something going on. And again, if I put my finger into the field of view, you'll see that um, the resolution we have is much worse and it's much better and easier to see things uh, when you have a much more limited range of temperatures in the field of view. So in other words, mask off all the hot things, uh, try and keep what you're looking at um, on the board all within the same temperature range uh, that you expect and that way you're going to see things much more clearly. So do this for the entire board. Once you're happy something works, mask it off. Anything that's running too cold or too hot, especially if you have a, a, a group of items like these memory chips, you can see now they're all running at the same temperature. Um, the one that wasn't working was cold. Don't assume that um, you're just looking for hot spots. It may be cold spots as well. Uh, and then a thermal camera is an extremely useful fault finding tool. So we've fixed this board now using nothing more than the thermal camera and um, a little bit of um, time covering over some of the hot components. So if you don't have a thermal camera, you can of course use your fingers. Just be aware that some items may be extremely hot. And also don't do that if it's um, a device that may have mains or high voltages in it. It's just purely a technique to use on low voltage equipment only.